Today I'm going to show you how to make stickers. There are a few different ways you can make stickers, either for personal use or for starting a sticker shop with. Each method has its own pros and cons that we'll go over so you can decide the right way for you. I'm showing all the different ways that you can do it that I've personally tried and figured out along the way so that you don't have to. Creating the sticker design. If you already have your design, then you can skip ahead to the printer chapter. But if you don't know how to go about designing a sticker, then continue watching. As an artist, I try to draw quite often and I use a lot of my artworks to make my own stickers. This is one way you can make your own sticker designs too. If you want to draw something specifically for your sticker and you struggle with ideas, then my suggestion would be to take a quick look on Etsy and a look on Pinterest. See what designs you personally like and perhaps use them as inspiration to make your own sticker design. Be very careful not to copy a current design or sticker though, as this is copyright infringement. Try to be as original as possible. It usually works out a lot better to have original designs than copied ones. If you don't like drawing or you don't feel that you have the necessary skills, you can commission some artists to make you your own personal sticker designs. These artists can then sell you the rights for you to sell these stickers on. Or a different idea would be that you could look for commercially free fonts if you're on a budget and make plain slogan stickers. You can decorate these with little doodles if you want to make it a little bit more unique to you. You can also buy fonts with commercial selling rights if you have a higher budget. If you choose to draw your own stickers, you can do so traditionally or digitally. You can use traditional mediums or use an iPad with a program like Procreate. Of course, you can also use a computer. There are a range of drawing programs out there, so just have a look and see which one works best for you. Traditional artworks will require some post-design alterations to colour and brightness and also maybe some cleanup methods, such as erasing the paper background. When creating a sticker design digitally, there is less cleanup involved and usually it offers a cleaner look to the designs. Decide which method works best for you and your personal taste. Printing and cutting stickers at home. The first method involves sticker paper, scissors and a printer. If you want your stickers to be extra protected, you can use laminating pouches as well. For this, you'll need a laminator. The printer. The higher end your printer, the more expensive it will be. My current printer, which still isn't top of the range, is not the most affordable at £200. It does print well however and is very good with ink, meaning it is very vibrant and lasts a while before the ink needs to be replaced. If you're starting out and you can't afford or you don't need a higher range printer, then you can get budget ones around £40 to £60. Just keep in mind the budget printers may not be as high a quality and not as long lasting with the ink. The sticker paper. If you search sticker paper on Amazon, you'll get a huge bunch of results. It may take you a little try and error figuring out which paper will be the best for your methods and for your printer. Some printers may not print as well on certain papers and some methods like lamination may cause your sticker paper not to be very sticky when it's used due to the quality of the sticker paper. There are a lot of budget friendly sticker papers on Amazon which worked well for me for years. But if you aren't on too much of a limited budget, my personal recommendation would be sticker paper from online labels. They have a range of sticker papers all for different uses so you can work out which one is the best one for you. Optional, lamination. If you want a little extra protection to your sticker, you can laminate them. Laminators are around 20 to 50 pounds and to use a laminator, you will need laminating pouches. You can choose from glossy or matte pouches, which you can then cover your sticker paper with this pouch before putting it through the machine. Laminating pouch costs vary depending on the type that you buy, with glossy typically being cheaper than matte. Glossy is around eight to 15 pounds, whereas matte can be around 25 pounds per pack of 100 sheets. The current pouches I like to use are the A4 matte pouches from GBC. Before using these, I used Deskit a lot as they were such high quality. However, when they were out of stock for so long, I needed to find a better alternative. I tried Fellows, but it didn't give me the finish I was looking for. The GBC pouches are costly, but to me personally, they are really worth it. Again, this is something that will probably need a little bit of trial and error to see what works best for you. The cutting method. Depending on your budget and the tools you have, your method for how you cut your stickers can vary. If you don't have as much a budget to work with, using a pair of nice sharp scissors to achieve neat cut lines will work well. However, this can be very time consuming. If you have more budget to work with, you can consider purchasing a machine to cut for you. The main ones to consider is a Silhouette or a Cricut cutting machine. From my research, the Silhouette machines are slightly cheaper than the Cricuts, with a Silhouette portrait being 180 
180 pounds and the Cricut coming in around 300 pounds. I have personal experience using the Cricut and I feel that the time saved by the machine cutting is worth the cost. However, if you are starting out to sell and you don't have a high budget, then cutting with scissors will work well until you make enough money to buy yourself the cutting machine. How I create a sticker design in Procreate and use a Cricut to cut. Once you have your design drawn in Procreate, you will need to think about adding a background to your image for your cutting machine to cut around. This keeps your design free from being cut by the machine and it makes it look more professional professional, giving it a crisp white border. To do this, I will use a non-textured, smooth, stabilized brush in Procreate. I use my own outline brush that I made specifically for this purpose. However, you can also use the technical pen that comes with the standard Procreate brushes. Once complete, send your image to your computer, where you can upload it to your cutting software. As I use Cricut, I will upload my design to Cricut Design Space. This is a software Cricut gives you to make your own stickers with. For my stickers, I always select Moderately Complex. Then next, I click Apply and Continue. After this, I will select print then cut image as my upload type and name it before uploading it. Once it's uploaded, I can then add it to my canvas, adjust the sizes to my liking and then click make it. This will then show you a preview of how your stickers will print on the pages. If you need to change anything, you can easily go back by pressing cancel. Here you can make any changes you wish. You can even keep going back and forth like I am clearly doing here until you're happy with how it's going to print. Once I'm happy, I click continue and send it to the printer. While it prints, I'll put my laminator on to heat up so that when it's finished printing, I can put it in my laminating pouches and put it into the laminator. Make sure to put it in the right way to avoid it messing up or jamming. Once it's laminated, I put it onto a cutting mat. My Cricut cutting mats lost their stickiness a long time ago, so now I tape the stickers to the mats. However, sometimes if it's not stuck down properly, the paper can slip while it's cutting and this can ruin the stickers. So I try to make sure to tape mine down as much as possible using a plastic free tape. To cut these laminated stickers, I will change the setting on the Cricut to poster board plus and I'll also use a deep point blade so I have a nice smooth cut line. If you aren't using laminating pouches, you can lower the setting to something like cardstock so it's not too rough on the sticker paper and use a fine point blade with this. But this is something you may need to play around with to see what's right for your paper and for your method. Something I found is that the vinyl setting works well for kiss cut sticker sheets. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to make a sticker sheet tutorial. Outsourcing your sticker production. The last method in making your own stickers is to outsource them. With this method, the upfront cost per sticker is high as you'll be paying for a bulk amount of your sticker designs from a production company. Companies like Sticker Mule and Sticker App allow you to upload your designs and select the finishes you want from standard vinyl to holographic or glow in the dark. For this method of outsourcing your sticker designs with a sticker company like Sticker App, and when using a digital program to make your design, you don't need to worry about adding a background layer as Sticker App does this for you. So all you need to do is to upload your design as a PNG file with a transparent background. If you have the budget, then outsourcing is the option that I'd recommend as it is much better on your time. It frees up time for you to design more products and stickers. I'd recommend you do some thorough market research before though, if you are planning to start a sticker shop and haven't sold any stickers before. This helps you just to know what kind of stickers sell well. The last thing you want is stacks of stickers that just aren't selling. Final thoughts. Here are all the pros and cons of the methods I've mentioned, which hopefully will help you in making a decision on the right method for you. Depending on your journey, you might start from the first one and work your way up just like I did. Or if you have the budget, you can just start with the outsourcing. It's completely up to you and your own personal journey. If you found this tutorial useful, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. It really helps a lot. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a lovely day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.